What's good, pimp? Y'all chilling, a little sip of tequila. Uh, before we get into this, before we get into this music shit, are you ready for the new uh, invasive species of spider that we have in Georgia? Wait, what? <laughs> Come again? Say what? <laughs> no, it's a spider. That joint is is big, but it make these super strong ass webs. Though, like the webs is strong as hell, and uh, oh, they were God. like, "Yeah, yeah." My pest control dude was telling me this morning, and they're like. 360 your house with just webs to be spiders and, and webs everywhere and the webs are strong as hell so yeah hey, bro. yep that's what's happening in georgia <laughs> what's good what if, everybody uh, what if you get jumped by the super spiders and the murder hornets they just jump you one day Yeah, you know, super spider versus the murder hornets that's what i wanted to see dc take notes <laughs> that's a <laughs> fact shit together. take beats in the building what up bro <laughs> take beats to god what's popping bro Hey, I uh, posted a question on Instagram today, and I guess y'all can answer this in the chat. When do you make your best beats, in the morning or at night? Let Ooh, us know. That's a good question. Let us know in the chat. Um, I think I know for you. L- let me guess. Let me take a guess. Morning. Yes, I'm, a, I'm an early guy. I hate that's sleepy me. time beats, bro. I'm not a... Bro, once I get into that phase where I'm yawning every, like, 10 minutes, I'm, I'm no good, dog. Like, it's a wrap, dog. That's a fact. Somebody asked me to do something at 11 o'clock at night. I was like, nah, bro. You want the best of me. We're going to try to do that a little bit earlier. Like, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we can talk. We do the video at 11. No, we can't. To me, it's like, uh, I don't know. It's like if you've been doing stuff all day and then you're getting like the leftover brain cells if you're working at four in the morning, you know what I mean? Like all night. But if you yeah. wake up, you know what I mean? And you fresh, then it's like, you know what I mean? You get your yeah, coffee yeah, that's in. Different. Yeah, yeah, I feel like you got your brain is working on some different different functions. Bro, I don't I don't know. But I've been this thing been running all day. You don't want the eleven thirty of that. Yeah. Unless I want the to only, sleep. The only way that I could do late night is the post party late night. Facts. Yeah, that, when you're coming back. That's second win. Yeah, you got you got some inspiration. You've been in a club, you know what I mean? You're probably a little tipsy or somewhat on some, you know what I mean, doing what you do. Yeah, you hype. That that turn up. That, to me, that's a great turn up. That's a good little vibe. You got two hours before you about to go to sleep. Oh, yeah. And you better make the best of that drink. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> well, wait. So real quick, I'm excited. I don't know if anybody else is excited. Uh, new Buster Rhymes album coming out. Hmm. October 30th. Knots is on there, of course. Knots is, oh, is on all course. the joints. Focus. I think Focus is on there. I'm not sure, but I saw Focus post about it. I'm excited as hell about another Buster album. I don't know if anybody else is, but yeah. I know Buster's, I'm going to get a show. Buster is in that category of like, like I think him, Lil Wayne. It just they could never put out an album, and then like I mean, like five years later, you'd be like, you just be happy that they put out an album. You know what I mean? Like I'm just happy to see Buster out here. You know what I mean? Moving around, like that's right. what I'm happy about. October 30th, I will be there. And it's rare that somebody comes out with an album and I'm like, you know, standing online for that joint or virtually standing online. Mm. I'll, I'll be there for this one, bro. Does I'll Tim got anything on there? I don't know. I that I don't know. That's the one I'm going to be disappointed at. I feel like that's a good little combo, man. Yeah. Now, if it's a classic, it's Extinction Level event too. The people that I've seen on it is shaping up to be a classic Buster album. Oh, uh, okay. So I don't I don't really know, but if Tim got something on there, that'll be super dope. But I'm just pumped. Oh, he got a song with uh Old Dirty Bastard on it too. Okay. Yeah, Not man. That's a that's Not a rapper man. that no, people don't use <laughs> they don't bring back a lot of like lost old dirty verses. Right. Yeah, that is true. I wonder why that is. Everybody else that passed away, they bring they bring back all oh, their verses. Get, all the posthumous. Is that the right posthumous? Yes, indeed. Posthumous, not posthumous, because ain't nothing funny about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're gonna get into some. We're gonna get into some some real questions here. Uh, oh, real quick, and I know I'm all over the place today. Posted something yesterday. Basically, things that you could do to to live a happier life. Somehow that led to a comment from somebody. I hope he's in here. He said he would join today. Um, and he said, if you, uh, basically, if you make it in your career and you get rich, would you leave your homeboy behind or your homeboys behind? 
Listen, in a nutshell, <laughs> yes. But, yeah, I was about to... <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. But you got to realize, or have I? <laughs> right. But it leads to a deeper thing. And I think um, some people know this, but some people don't realize. Mm-hmm. As you ascend and you start doing other things, and some people you may hang out with, they're not really doing anything. You mm-hmm. can't help everybody. Sure. That's my thing. And it's not about friendship. It's not about relationships. It's just about life. Some things were not meant to be peanut butter and jelly together forever. You know what I mean? I've had homeboys that couldn't stay out of jail long enough to get help. Uh Um, Not everybody is built for the road that you are traveling. Like, for instance, you could want to help your homeboy. But if you're doing like corporate mergers and let's (laughs) say you want your homeboy to be your assistant. Y'all roll up in the meeting and he smell like hella weed the loud pack dog that's ruining your joint yeah, because right. you two came in here smelling like weed you did yeah, um, that's real you know that might be an extreme version of the situation but listen man not everybody's built for the road that you're traveling you're not built for the mm-hmm. road that everybody else is traveling sometimes you might be that homeboy that gets left behind but the point is when you get a chance to shake some dead weight shake that shit bro shake bro, it. that that was a, I don't want to say, it, well, I guess I will say it was an issue that, uh, like, when I first started getting somewhat of, so I don't want to say success, success, but, you know, like, when stuff started kind of coming together for me, mm-hmm. it's because I had all these friends from where I grew up that rapped, and then I was always the guy that was, like, beatboxing, and, you know what I mean, making, and they felt like, oh, well, he's on, so put me on, you know what I mean, but, like you were saying, they was in and out of jail, they were staying in trouble doing stuff. And then right. they haven't did anything since high school. And it's like, bro, like the music has changed, bro. You know what I mean? The only reason I'm getting good is because I'm around other top people who are really good. So you I'm like doing soaking it. up. Yeah. But these these are people who didn't really do anything with they, you know, with their life. And we cool outside of that. But it was this pressure for me to try to put people on. And they didn't understand what comes with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh so yeah, I mean, bro, sometimes you gotta you gotta dip out on people, you know, and ain't no disrespect. It's it's all love. It's just that's the thing. Yeah, like listen, wise. if you want to keep your shit afloat, I'm gonna keep it real 100 percent You have to be very picky with who you associate your professional life with. It's as simple as that. And the thing is, people identify themselves as homeboys, family, brother, cousin, all that shit before the type of person that they actually are. Yeah, you my homeboy. But you also drink a lot and you're a little handsy with the ladies, you know, that type yeah, of thing. Yeah, like that smoke around you at all. <laughs> and those type of people, they seem to not know that about themselves when they're mm-hmm. talking to you about how come you didn't put them on. So don't let somebody guilt you into that right. shit either. Because people will try to guilt you into it. Like, oh man, you think you're better than everybody else now? All of that. Listen, man, that shit. Think it's a three dollar bill, don't fall for it. I hate when people be like, man, you change. I'm like, bro, I'm supposed to. <laughs> if I'm the same since when you met me 10 years ago, there's something wrong here. Like, I haven't been doing anything, bro. But I done traveled. I done been right. around people. I mean, I'm a different person now. You know what I mean? I wasn't eating avocados back then. Now now I'm a little culture. A little more hummus on the plate. You know what I mean? Can't take I'm can't take you with me. Can't take yeah. you with me. The, the fries are truffle now, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These aren't regular. These aren't the curly boys. Mm-hmm. Facts, but no, nah, seriously, because that's that's like some some hood shit, man. That that's some that's some super hood shit. That, uh, but I will say, if you come across that situation, you should probably consider yourself lucky, because that means you're doing something that somebody right. desperately wants to be a part of. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I just had to uh, I just had to get that off my chest right quick. I told homeboy that I would um that I would address it, and not that he was saying anything crazy, but he just raised a really a really good point. So let me ask you this, Oracle. When somebody from your hometown or you grew up with asks you for advice about music, what is your advice to them? I usually say, first of all, stop calling me P. Diddy in that sarcastic tone. <laughs> then. <laughs> take that, take that. Right. Um, I usually ask two questions, one, one or two questions, just to gauge where they are, like how serious they are about it. Like mm. nothing, nothing crazy, not like a I got you type question, but just, you know, kind of what they've done so far. Right. And you could kind of tell when a person is, wishing out loud and when somebody like nah I've been I've been putting in the work I know about this because it's hard to explain things to people that don't know the pieces like you can't explain the game to somebody if they don't really know how the pieces work on the board right. so if you're like oh man you should 
try this and you use whatever. And they're like, well, what the hell is that? What is growth hacking? Or you start throwing out terms and shit. And they're like, I don't know what it is. So I, I gauge it off that. And then I usually, if they're with it, I just set up a, um, you know, a, a better time to talk. Cause that's right. usually not the, not the greatest time to talk. Like I'm, I'm with my wife or, you know, right. whatever. And if they are, are not really about it, um, I just kind of let it go. Cause most of those people aren't serious and they don't follow up anywhere. Right. Yeah. Most of the time when I talk to people, like I got a cousin who writes, right. And he hit me up and see, I always respect him. Cause he's very cool about how he hits me up. He, he rarely hits me. I'm like, bro, you can hit me up more. I'm we're blood. Like I'll, I'll help you dog. You know, just let me know. Mm-hmm. And, um, but my all, like everybody that I know that like is family or I grew up with this in music, I'm like, bro, just do more of it. Like y'all making 10 songs and like, all right, what do I do? I'm like, yo, right. make a hundred, 200 songs. And you know what I mean? You'll start seeing patterns and stuff like that. It's good to check and get like a barometer of where you at, but like, keep going. Like 10 is good. It's a good start, but like, you got to knock out them numbers. It's like a, you know, it's like a numbers game. Mm-hmm. And I noticed like with a lot of people, that is like the thing, like even dog, I was looking at the beats I've done for this year, you know, I haven't been on beats as much. I've been business and then I was sneaking in, cooking up. Right. Yeah. I, I, I looked at my catalog for this year. I'm like, oh, I, I got a lot of work to do. I still got to beef my joint up because I don't have I don't feel comfortable going into a, a meeting playing the amount that I, I got some good stuff, some great stuff, but I need more of what I have. You know what I mean? And yeah. I think most people don't realize that how much stuff, it, how much great music you need to have in a tuck and how many ideas you need to have flushed out. You That's know? a fact. Discipline too. A lot. Yeah, exactly. A lot of discipline. People underestimate how much discipline uh, it really takes. But I would say this though, don't, even though it may, it may kind of get on your nerves, I wouldn't suggest that people start shunning everybody because you will have those people that are serious that you can help and they do end up doing something like okay for instance uh one thanksgiving i think this is 2009 or 10 or something like that you know we host thanksgiving my nephew young shout out to uh tay the producer i think tay might have been like 13 at the time or something like that and that's when uh i had the gold nico Oh man, he, back in the day. Yeah, so he was kind of interested in music. He came into the uh, he came into the studio. He's just, you know messed around on Nico. Took a picture in front of that joint and everything, and then told his mom like he really wanted to be a producer, really wanted to do music or whatever. Mm-hmm. So she hit me like, all right, what you know? He wanted to get into this. What should I buy him? Whatever. I gave her a short list. He she got the stuff. He went to full sale. Right. Long story short, shout out to say the producer producer oh, for yeah. a boogie and then everybody else like just out of here cooking. Like, Super out of it. And he's dope, super dope. So there are those people, but you just got kind of got to qualify him. And even at 13, he was easy to qualify. Like I asked him one question or two questions. His enthusiasm, the way he answered the questions, let me know that he was, he was at fire. least on to something. And then boy turned out to be fire, fire. Oh yeah, he, he cold. It's crazy. I had ran into him in a random studio. He's like, Yeah, you know, you know my uncle. I'm like, who? But then when I pieced it together, I'm like, oh, okay. Facts. Yeah, oh yeah. Facts. Unk, a title that I am not that cool with wearing, but I will wear I will wear it. Alex Music, yes, we do respond. Yes, indeed. On on Tuesdays though. What's today? Friday? Oh dang. Damn, just missed the response. Response day. <laughs> no. All right. What, what's happening in this chat? Uh we'll see. Busy Works B says, I was watching you guys' old podcast. It's super evergreen. Oh yeah. He sent me a picture, bro. This was at your old crib. Oh, no. The old, the old, old crib when we used to drink, like, we would drink a whole bottle of Jameson, and that was a podcast. So the podcast would be, like, six hours, and hour five and six is just us, like, you know what? <laughs> Able to is the best, and I'm going to tell you why, even though you ain't mm-hmm. asked me. <laughs> Good times, though. Yeah, exactly. All right, man, what are we missing We'll see. Smoking Ace says, yeah, I feel like I've been slacking myself on the beats more than usual, but I've been working and expanding with the brand more. You got to balance. You know what I mean? Yeah. You gotta... You're doing a pretty good job at that, though, bro. I've been seeing you. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> like like me and Oracle was talking about this earlier, I've been going crazy on the business so I can have, I'm trying, the Oracle brought it up and I've been stuck on it November and mm-hmm. December off, right? Yes, sir. So I'm, I'm working like crazy so I can have November and December and I'm just going to 
make music and drink and hang with the family all that's my plans for november december yeah and then you can get into things that's kind of been pushed put on the back burner it's kind of mm-hmm. like passion projects or not that important yet exactly yeah there's a couple of things we were talking about i'm like man i can't wait to get into that oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but first yeah somebody said open lab nightmares for show oh for show oh, no, for show baby. Dog, I used to have to fix those Nikos. Oh, yeah. I used to have to fix Polo's joints, Tim's joints, and they had multiple ones, and them shits was always going out. Always. It's time for me to buy a new webcam, my dog. Oh, man. Don't we got the same joint? Like, we do. I don't know why my joint be acting crazy. Oh, it might just be a second. Young Witness Protection. Young Realistic Productions in the building. <laughs> young Realistic, what up, bro? Soon to hey, be ATL realistic. That's a fact. That's a fact. My dog finna be out here. He finna be out here. Uh, let me and we got wet. <laughs> hey, <laughs> let me pepper dry, but it don't even matter. Um, <laughs> yeah, we got something cool coming up too. Uh, you know, hey. more more on that later though. More on that. Um, uh, yeah, what's going so on? It's like uh, it's like shooting a film. It's better have more footage. That is that's also correct. See, it's easier to trim away stuff than it is to. Right. Not have enough. Yep. Um, go ahead, because I, I think we got a good question here. Okay. A buddy of mine is helping Snoop's next album, and he sold, uh, oh, he told they have 100 tracks recorded for this new album. Bruh, I believe it. Sounds about right. It's the mm-hmm. Gucci Man. Bruh, Gucci Man, people will start realizing, but Gucci, like, really changed music because Gucci would just record 60 songs in a month. You know what I mean? And, like, and just pick yep. the best ones. And to me, it's like, you. I mean, yeah, you can't spend five hours on one record, you know what I mean, or two weeks. But then what if that record ain't great? You know what I mean? That's a fact. DMX would do the same thing. Mm-hmm. And that year, he came out with two albums that was like multi-platinum. Mm-hmm. You know? But think about how many songs like you had to make. Oh, yeah. And there was some trash ones in there. It's got to be the, just the numbers. It's got to be some horrible ones in there. But oh, you're yeah. getting them out the way. You know what I mean? That's a fact. And shout out to the artists that you know they got like 400 in the tuck <laughs> and they still do 100 for the new project. Right. And all they're going to end up with now is like 450 in the tuck or 490 in the tuck. But that's, that was that's the question. Dope. All right. So I think this is a good one. If online producers aren't making sales by selling beats online, should they just focus on cooking up packs and sending them out to as many artists and bigger producers as possible? My answer to this is yes, but wait. Yes, you should. But my question is, why weren't you doing the cooking up and sending out packs to other artists and bigger producers right. already? Um, and I don't know if this is this person's case, but a lot of people are like, all right, I'm going to try this. And then if that doesn't work, I'm going to try this. Well, the thing is, you want to try as many, when you're just starting out, you want to try as many things as possible. At least this is my philosophy on it because you never know what you're going to be good at. You never know what's going to stick mm-hmm. for you. Hell, you might be good at all of the strategies that you try. And now you got more lines in the water because nothing is going to last forever. You know right. what I'm saying? So I'd be like, yeah, you, you could also work on whatever the first thing is, get into the second thing, but just maybe reallocate your time. A little bit you know does that make sense yeah no that's real yeah it's not and, an either or type of thing man you got to try out a lot of different stuff and i would just look at it too like you got to think that those are two separate things it's, it's not the same business even though it's similar it's a different goal a different clientele like who your uh your avatar is you know mm-hmm. what i mean using the, the marketing words but who your avatar is is going to be different between selling beats and doing all that let's see oh yeah so, you know, I I would try to, I mean, if you're selling beats to it, I guess it's like, yo, how how much did you try? You know what I mean? How many variables did you change? Because that's like saying selling kits. Like at the beginning, I wasn't selling kits. I wasn't doing great at it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But years of tweaking and figuring it out, you know, you'll get there. Well, that's the thing, too. A lot of people, they like, if this doesn't work, I'll try this. But they never let go of the first thing because you can't, some things you don't know if they're not working right now and you should mm-hmm. just kind of keep at it. And next thing you know, you could have been doing something for two years, not seeing the results that you wanted, but still like, I don't know if it didn't work yet. That's why mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, just throw as many lines in the water as you can and what right. 
what works. And then you do that good old uh, 80-20 analysis. Me and Tris was talking about that earlier today. Oh, yeah. Do that good 80-20 analysis and um, you know, just double down on what's working. Yes, sir. Okay. So, okay. I seen people says, do y'all do collabs? Uh, good question. Do y'all do collabs? And if so, how much? So me and Oracle both don't do collabs, but I have an opportunity that I had to finesse. So guys, please take advantage, right? Mm -hmm. I just dropped a kit with my, my bro, young Diego Ave. Talk don't about know it. Diego just produced on YG new album. Mulatto, Ooh. Chris Brown, um, mm -hmm. Ray Shrem, like pretty much any song that's on, you know, somebody's popping Diego's on the album right now. It's really going crazy. This is my bro. We did a sample pack together. It's really his sample pack. I'm just the, the host for it. You're the um, distribute. you the plug. Yeah, I'm, I'm the distribution for it. And um, I, I got him to agree that we're going to do, basically, if you buy the pack and you put up videos on Instagram, we're going to pick somebody. He's going to do a collab with him. Come on. Simple. You know what I mean? So you ain't got to pay us directly. One, you get the benefit of getting a sample pack. Two, you get a chance. And we're going to give away uh, a keyboard, too. So... It's a win-win all around. You get sounds, you get a chance to win with a Grammy award-winning producer, and you get gear. Wait, so, is it is it an MPK? It is. Yo, you can People never get enough. Them. Bro, yeah. I was just about to say, despite all the dope whatever keyboards is coming out, the MPK is still the go-to. Bro, I've tried to give away other stuff. It never does as well as MPK. Oh. MPK, everybody's like, run that. I want that. I, gave away, like, eh. I gave away Omnisphere, and it didn't do mm -hmm. as good as an MPK. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I think it's the colors, too. Because even if you already got one, if you get the all black one, you'd be like, hey, I'll take it. You know what I mean? I got three, bro. <laughs> yeah, <Yo, But> you, <laughs> <laughs> you got them dressed from Costco. Duh, every piece of equipment in here is like Charlie Brown closet. I got them all in different colors. Same things, though. But um, no, that's dope. Shout out to uh, the new pack and the new pack. What is this? U Ultimate 3? Ultimate 3, dog. You see the little <laughs> Super Saiyan speakers right here. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, I know on Instagram, they like, what the hell is he doing? They can't oh, see yeah. that. That's all right. That's all right. I feel oh, like yeah, the weather man. guy. Over here, we got the... <laughs> all right. So we got another question here. Should producers share sales if they made money leasing beats using loops from packs? There is nothing that says that you have to. If you wanted to do so out of the kindness of your own heart, like if you did something with a royalty free pack and you right. wanted to split something or give somebody credit i mean i think that's i think that's dope you're not legally obligated by any means if it's royalty free to do so but mm -hmm. uh, i think it says something about your character if you are the type of person that will reach out we talked about this on the show before like to some people they're like well why would i include another person but if that person is bigger than you and known if yeah. you show that type of uh if you demonstrated that type of gesture that person is more than likely going to want to form a relationship with you because that was a, just a dope thing you did. Right. If they're more known to you, they're probably getting more business to you and they may be more inclined to bring you mm -hmm. into the business that they have going on. A lot of things to some people looks like you just giving away stuff and people would be like, why would you give away, give away, mm -hmm. give away? But when you impart techniques like that as part of a full strategy, man, now you're cooking. Right. A lot of people not going to see it. And so what if they don't see it? The thing is, mm -hmm. what is your result in the end? If you got the strategy worked out and that is your end game, man, damn what other people are saying. Right. I, I personally would do it. Yeah, yeah. Do people with, do business with people that you, your friends and people that you admire, like, like busy, for example, right? Yes. Busy, busy. We would give busy the pack and he'll still buy it because he, and it, so it's a different respect. You know what I mean? It's like, you you gotta respect the guy. It's like if he asks for something, I'm like, yo, I respect it, bro, because you you didn't have to. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. of course I'm gonna go out my way to help you. You know what I mean? So and same if Oracle needs something, same philosophy. I'm gonna do business with him. We're gonna do business first, and then that's gonna open doors. So Talk I don't think it. you have to, but definitely doing business with people is a great way to network and get out there. It's not a horrible strategy. Hmm. It's it's not if. If you have the luxury, see, here's another thing too, and this may be getting a little too deep into the topic, but if you are driven by a bit of desperation, 
it, it could be desperation because of the amount of time you've been doing something and you finally got one, or it could be a money thing, whatever it is, you're less likely to make strategic plays like that. But if you have the luxury of either maybe being okay financially or just realizing that things are going to take way longer than you expect them to, and you can move at that leisurely pace, then you develop a lot better uh, game game plans and something like right. that can be really beneficial to you, but not everybody has the, the patience or the, you know, just the situation in life right. to even do something like that. But shit, I would do it, bro. For sure. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Uh, shout out to Without No DJs podcast. That's my brother's podcast, man. He, <laughs> he interviews all the top DJs in the world. So if you're interested in DJing, you know, check out my bro. That is a fact. That is a fact. Uh, let's see. Thundertrack says, uh, Oracle, I was on Timberland stream and made the bench. What should I do from here? Um, shit, get off the bench, get back in the game. Keep shooting. Put up on threes. Yeah. Come on, keep, keep going until you, <laughs> yeah. you don't make the bench. Hey. Yeah. That's how you got to do it. Shooter's going to shoot. You know what I mean? Mm. I mean, that's good, though. And I like what Tim's doing. I saw uh, him shout out uh, Beats Music. I saw that. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's good to see yes, the community sure. people. You know what I mean? So, hey. Keep working. Keep in the studio. Keep trying to make better stuff. Yeah. We'll Killing. see young uh, Pixel One waves. Also, happy belated, even though I think I told you happy birthday during <laughs> the time. Yes, indeed. Happy belated to you. And also, oh. my dog Chambers had a birthday. Oh, man. Shout out to Chambers, man. <laughs> happy birthday. Also, Quintendo, I got your hoodie yesterday. I appreciate it, bro. Hey. Yeah. Hold on real quick. Can y'all still see me on here? I had a or something else. Oh, we got the mixes. The mix is back. E. Yep. We got the mixes back for um the Halloween kit. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Oh. Yes, sir. So listen, Halloween AF part five coming out yeah. again this season, the fifth installment. I think this might be the best one. One of the best ones. Oh, it's definitely the best one, bro. <laughs> bro I listened I to it the other day. I was naming the I was naming some drums or something. I'm just listening to everything together with the loops and the drums. I'm like, damn, this shit is official right here, bro. I ain't gonna front, bro. I definitely was going I meant to take out some of those loops and just keep them, <laughs> but I forgot and just sit it. <laughs> oh, this joint is this joint is okay. <laughs> yeah, that joint is fire, bro. So yeah, hey. Well, maybe we should run it a little bit longer this time, too. I'm with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Instead of just Start a couple early. days, maybe run yeah. it for a week or, you know, just yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm with it. Uh, halftime beat says Diego ass has heat. Big That's facts, fact. man. That is a fact. That Let's is see. a fact. If you want to stay purchased, warm, stand close to the heat. I purchased Oracle Kit. Nice. Hey. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. On Come on, man. Let's go. Let's go. Um, uh, is that... Halloween pack exclusive. Yeah, so it's like once they're gone, they're gone. We put them up. You know what I mean? You could download them for the free ski. But once we turn them joints off, ain't no ain't no going back. Yes, it is a rapture on that one. Yeah, so make sure, yeah, if y'all not on the mailing list, make, you know, please sign up. Make sure y'all on there. That's a fact. You don't want to miss that. Uh, young Realistic, he says, yeah, Halloween AF5 is definitely the best. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely the best one. He just sent the mixes back. He is the and first I'm, recipient. And I'm proud because I feel like we're like early. This is like one of the first times. <laughs> <laughs> for, the, for the first three, at least. Mm-hmm. We were still working on them joints the morning of. Release. Oh, yeah. Oh, one of them, we made a page. <laughs> we were making a page right when we were driving it. <laughs> we remade the page, too. Yeah, right. Page went wrong. I had to remake the whole thing. Hey, man, it, you know, it is what it is. We, we professionals in the game, so we're a little yeah. early this year. It only took us five years. Yeah, we're only. Good. Only, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, so we have another another uh, dope question. Is it still relevant for producers to put out beat tapes? Um, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I think so. Yeah. It's, the, it, it's kind of the equivalent of you could just leave your work somewhere, put your name on it, and people just walk past like, oh, what's that? Oh, who did that? Mm. Um, I think it's I think it's really dope. Yeah. I don't see why a producer would not. Um, okay, that's a lie. I can see why a producer would not want to put out a beat tape. But for the ones that do, I think it's really, really good promotion for sure. You know, th- this made me think of this conversation. Oh, I'm pulling up the tweets. Mm-hmm. So, uh, homie from I haven't talked to him in in a while, and I just found him on Twitter. Um, but his name is Worldwide uh, Ty. 
So Ty is Brent Fiaz's manager, right? Ty is a good dude. I knew him from back in the day. And he had this series of tweets, right? And it was like, it was to me, it was like interesting. He said, dear producers, get 10 artists that you want to put out uh, music with via distro kid. Tell them you'll give them 25 to 40% of the record. You won't charge them for the production fee. Get 30 songs flowing through distro kid. Watch your income grow. It's a fire plan. I like it. I, and I read this and I was like, man, this is this is gems because, I mean, everybody thinks of placement, placement, chase after, which in a way is great. But, you know, as yeah. people who've done this, too, it's it's a headache in, in the same process. You know what I mean? It's a lot of stress that comes with that. But you building something. We always talk about working with artists and building something of your own. Mm-hmm. This is a way that you can make money, uh, get yourself out there and kind of build your brand with somebody. And still be able to, you know, cake up off of. So I thought it was a good you. little idea for a hustle. No, that's that's a fire idea. Let me ask people in the chat. If anybody's going to try this idea, let spam the hearts. I just want to see how many people would try it. Because it's such a blueprint. And the plan is, like, already there. I just want to see who would try it. Yeah. Uh, it looks like nobody would try it. And Ty is that guy, bro. Like, if y'all follow, go follow him on Twitter. Ty is, like... I don't know if you've ever seen it. I think it's a vice thing about how, like, they use, like, Facebook marketing to figure out Brent Fayez's tour Mm -hmm. to see, like, his, bro, they looking at analytics. They looking at engagement based off Spotify listens and stuff like that. that. Yeah. Yeah, So Ty is the guy. That's the guy who's behind all of that. Like, he's a smart dude, man. So when I saw those tweets, I was like, okay, got to share this on the podcast. Nice. No, that's dope. Yeah, okay. A couple people smoking aces, but we got a couple hearts in there. I just think that's a dope. Uh, that's a dope plan. Somebody got to try that. Yeah. Shit, I might even <laughs> throw some things up there. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see. Realistic says, uh, speaking of caking up with your music, oh, we got. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We got a blog dropping on Monday about sync placements. Hey. If you're not already on the mailing list, please. Sign up for the mail list at soundoracle.net so you can get that blog on Monday. It is fire. It's nothing but gems on how to make more money. The year is not over. You can still rack up some bread from your music. All you need is a couple of blueprints. I think we done gave out like like three or four, three or four strategies on this on this podcast alone, bro. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, everybody's saying what's his name? So worldwide, wide, I can't tell worldwide <laughs> Ty T Y. Um, I don't know his Instagram, but Check his Twitter. That's why I'm reading the, the stuff from. Um, tell him I sent you. You know what I mean? He'd be like, hey, Trizzle said this was some gems. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Young Trizzles. Yes, sir. Oh, PSA time. Real quick. PSA, PSA, PSA. <laughs> I don't know who needs to hear this. I don't know who's out here doing this. But producers, if you're just starting out, you might be inclined to reach out to bigger producers in hopes that you know they'll like your music and invite you to collab on bigger things. One thing not to do, stop sending producers beats unwarranted under the guise oh, of, I thought you might enjoy these. But dog, uh, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. That's all I'm saying. Because the person that you're sending it to, number one, you know they're a producer. They probably didn't want to hear your beats. They don't know who you are. You never introduced yourself to start with and it's a real passive aggressive strategy that will make people just probably not like you off the rip like yeah man i thought you would like to like to listen to these when in actuality you want them to like it to ask more about you to collaborate Mm -hmm. with you so on and so forth like they know what the play is anybody could smell it a mile away what you really want and that is the reason why when you use such passive aggressive tactics, it makes people not really mess with you because everybody knows what it is out the right. gate and you're just the only one not not really saying it. So I encourage you, man, be be respectable, but be out front, man. Like get to the damn point. Mm-hmm. The worst the person could say is no. But when you start coming in with trickery and, and, and foolery right. and look over there and all that type of shit, nobody want to rock with you. So just don't be passive aggressive. Um, be straightforward, not rude, but just you know, straightforward. Get to the point, and people respect you a whole bunch more. Yeah, no, I, uh, my, I hate looking at my DMs sometimes. Not to my main DMs, but the the other one, because uh, it'd be full of like, 
oh, here you go. Here's some beats. Send this to such and such. I'm like, bro, why would I do that, bro? I don't know you. I have no idea who you are. Like, what are you talking about? 100%. Yeah, it's, it's, nah, and then, uh, you know how you have your email on Instagram? I had to change mine, bro, because I kept getting, bro, I kept yep. getting demos, album. I'm like, bro, this is for business, dog. I don't, I don't want to hear that, dog. Like, I get it, but it's other ways to shoot your shot. Thanks. That ain't the way. Facts. My assistant started sending me them joints. I was like, yo, please. Yeah, cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you go ahead and hold those. You can listen to these. <laughs> Hey, dance, dance, revolution! Get your get your party mm-hmm. on. I don't want to hear none of them. You can hold those. Those are yours. Those are your beats. So if you hear my assistant come out with a mixtape, it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Jin. D- Speaking of DJs, DJ MacGyver, what up? What's my see, brother? Uh, oh, MacGyver, what up, bro? Yeah, we we got to get him. We got to figure out a way to get him in the Zoom, bro. Yes, yeah, that, that's my guy. We ain't had a spicy MacGyver show in a long time. My man uh, might be on a whole different type of spice right now. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> without no DJ podcast says when uh, sending out your work to uh, whoever, are you concerned with the quality in which you send it, bit rate or the file format? That's a good question. Hold on one more time. I was looking at that that question. That sounded good. One more time. Okay. Uh, when sending out your work uh, to whomever, are you concerned with the quality that you're sending it, like bit rate or the file format? Mm, that is a good question. Mm. I like to send top, uh, like, you know, the best the best quality with it being the most compact. Like, I'm not going to send a super big WAV file. It's going to be right. an MP3, mm. it, it, but it's not going to be like the, the um, you know, the uh, <laughs> this, this 68 kilobits boy. It's going to be right. not like a, a 256, maybe a 320, you know? You yeah, know, that's know. real. Yeah, yeah I... I I can do MP3s. I try to get the mixing as good as I can. Yeah, that's a fact. Now, somebody asked me the other day when they're sending to people and they're kind of hesitant, should they, in order to keep their music from being stolen, should they downgrade the quality as far as the bit depth and all of that? that. I was like, nah, if you're going to be that scared, then just don't get in the game. Yeah. Because now you're doing a whole bunch to, once again, it looks it looks a little weird. And people are not really going to rock with you. Either you got to man up, woman up, and just send it and, you know, pray that the jackets right. don't be jacking. But don't be out here, uh, you know, just sending 8-bit files because it's going to sound bad. And at the end of the day, mm. if you are more worried about theft than the sound of your music, which is the one thing that <laughs> right. you're going to pay attention to, then you got you to gotta reallocate some issues. Some, yeah, yeah. You got some things going on. Young BNB, what up, bro? He said, My dog Triz, I done grabbed a few kids about to grab that ultimate. Hey, party, hey, bro, hey, keep it going. Hey, this has been dog since for a minute, dog. Hey, shout out to you, bro. For sure. And young uh, Dr. Love's in here. Dr. Love, <laughs> what up, what up? Oh, we got MacGyver and Dr. Love in here. It sounds right. sound like a party now. You got the whole game. That's a fact. Uh, let's see. A realistic says a lot of big producers won't listen to the tracks you send uh, either because they don't want to risk being accused of stealing beats or style jacking. That's a fact. Yeah. That is a fact. Other than just not really wanting it. Yeah. Cause as soon as you open it, they're going to, somebody going to swear that you stole something or you did something, you know, a little Bro, shady. I, I learned that lesson. I never forget. And it's crazy. I have it on videotape. So me and just be man, no DJ, uh, we used to go to the radio station in Greensboro, North Carolina. Right. Mm-hmm. we used to just we were cool with everybody you know we we're DJing so we could always go up there and Swiss Beats was there and we tried to give him a beat CD and he wouldn't take it out of hand the manager took it but Swiss wouldn't technically take it and I didn't understand as a kid why that was but it's because he didn't want to uh, he doesn't want lawsuits right and I started mm-hmm. seeing it the more I started being around the industry I started seeing how certain people wouldn't take the actual I mean at that time CD but they mm-hmm. didn't want people to be like hey you took this from me and then you know what I mean? You stole it from me. So it's a lot of technicalities, you know what I mean, with that kind of stuff, man. So you got to be careful. <laughs> Slim, you ain't get that from me, bro. <laughs> right. You didn't like, get nah. that from me at all. Um, okay, here's a fun question that we got real quick. Lyrically, what dates a song the most? <laughs> uh, That's a good sorry question. Sorry for 2004. <laughs> Putting the date in there. 
That is number one. Definitely <laughs> saying the year. I think it was like 1996 or 97 rappers started getting hip on the not saying the year. Then you had a year of people saying, I'm not going to say the year. <laughs> so that was the awkward year of that. I'm not going to say the year because mm. that would date the song. Well, you you saying that kind of dates the song. Um, clothing brands. You can't put You got to be careful with that. Clothing brands. Definitely. The person that submitted the question said sports references. That's a really good that one. That is true. Um, I'm going to say cars. Mm. If you talk listen about the bubble X. To, bro, that's exactly what I was going to talk about. <laughs> if you listen to... Um, it's either uh, Mo Money, Mo Problems, one of them types of joints. Mace says Lexus three times in the first verse alone. And he just left the dealership. In every verse thereafter. Yeah, and that was the year. If you go look, mm. everybody it was Lexus, 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 Lexus. And then when you listen back at how excited people were about Lexuses, not that they're not, not nice cars, Lexuses are dope. But it's it's just funny to me. Like the Lex bubble, it was killing that year. And then the buggy buggy eye bends. What was that? that was it's an RB song. He talked about <clears throat> he feels like Jordan. Is it sorry for 2004? Or, or it's, it's either that or a genuine song, but he feel like Jordan. It, bro, it's the game, most dated game. Yeah, I'm just like, bro, this sounds, this sounds so old, dog. Like, don't ever use that. <laughs> that was terrible. And just using a sports reference in a sexy R and B song. Yeah, I'm cool. Nah, two things that just don't. Two things that are good that just don't go together. Once again, yeah. it's, it's like porn and comedy. You could like both <laughs> things that do not go together. Oh man, a little slapstick. <laughs> that a, that's a double entendre. I see what you that did was a double entendre right there. Yeah, but yeah, no, no, no sports references in a sexy R and B song. You gonna you gonna lose? Don't tell me you are gonna knock it out like Mike in the third round and none of that. Yeah, nobody would hit none of that. I'm tripping. Yeah, I mean it's even the same for beats too. I feel like uh, when I can hear those like uh, old like risers that. <laughs> Or that little tipsy that ch -ch 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 -ch. I'd yeah, be like, all right, bro, if you don't get this shit out of here, dog. Hey, what about them snare rolls, though? Oh, God, the Manny Fresh Boys, the, them, them the fruit four snacks. bar. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. I said that, and then on that 21 Savage, they got snare rolls, but they're classy. They're not the OD snare rolls. They're classy. You know what I mean? But it was Truffle the first time I heard rolls. a snare roll in a minute. Yeah. Hey, that's, that's, that's dope. Classy. Classy snare rolls. They're classy. Uh, Quintino makes a good point. He said, except for the 99s and the 2000s. That is a good point. Because it was a lot of records for the 99 and the 2000s. True, true. Why was that? I don't know. Well, it was a turn, turn of the millennium. I got to say that. You know what I didn't like, though? When people tried to start getting fancy with the, with the year for, for the nine nickel. Oh, yeah. The, 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 the nine double tray. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool on that. That's too much math. Listen, I got to... Yeah, yeah, I'm cool and I'm good. I don't, yeah. I don't want to hear my records like that. I don't want the uh, let's say a goodwill hunting. I don't, I don't mm -hmm. need the whole equation going on. The, the nine nine pennies minus four mo. Um, mm -mm. <laughs> but yeah, that was a weird time. People started doing that a lot. <laughs> then we had to get off of that. See, I still randomly laugh off when you said baby face is now a toddler face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm toddler oh, face. Man. That's a fact. That's a fact. You about to be middle school face in a minute, right? <laughs> Adolescent face. <laughs> <laughs> Adolescent face. <laughs> Look who's old enough to drink face. Right. Smoke Ace uh, said, "Still get mine in the one nine nine. That was the that was the chorus. Excellent song too. Shout out to Black Star. Damn. Oh, uh, this is a good question. What's the hardest part of starting and keeping this podcast going, guys? Hmm. Hmm. No. There was not a hard part in starting this podcast. Uh, it was kind of one of the easiest things that we've ever done, yeah. probably. I, uh, I, yeah, I feel like if live. I did it with somebody else, it would be like, here's the thing. Me and Oracle talk like this anyway. Literally before the show, we were having damn near these same conversations. That's a fact. Like four hours ago, you know what I mean? So this is like, to me, this is like every day. Like, this is like, oh, I'm talking to the homie. We talking about making beats and business stuff. So it's easy, you know, showing up. Yeah. I guess just being consistent, you know what I mean? Yeah, that might be it. We've been fairly consistent over the last four, four or five years. Um, yeah. Also, you know what I think was easy? What else was easy about starting this other than the chemistry is that we didn't set out to start this. 
Oh, it yeah. kind of happened. Now, I imagine if we'd have been like, you know what we should do? We should start a podcast and this we should figure out a name. It, this should be the mm-hmm. thing. And we didn't do any of that. We went live and then said, hey, this should be mm-hmm. a podcast. And then even still was like, it'll just happen as it happens. And that's what made it uh, made it real easy. I'm not going to lie. This shit was like super strenuous. We wouldn't be doing this. Oh, yeah. But it's, it's pretty right. easy. <laughs> Come yeah. on, it's Friday. I get to talk to my dog, and and we get to chill with y'all. And we known yeah. a lot of y'all for four years. Yeah, yeah, that's very, very true. That was a good so question. Busy said, busy said, talking to the same person every week is the hardest part. I don't even think it's that. You know, for us, I feel like it's the topics because with production is tricky because it's not always new music production news and stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. with production and that's what right with youtube right i had a couple weeks i was going crazy dog doing reaction videos and all that stuff but then i start running out of stuff to to react to you know what i mean and it's like i don't is do i react to tutorials because to me that's not interesting i still want it to be fun and like upbeat and quick you know what i mean so it's mm-hmm. like production it's is a little new. tricky yeah it's, it's a little tricky because it's the pace is a little slower equipment drops every couple months you know what i mean that's a fact. That's why I feel like, too, if you're going to do this, you've got to be entertaining on some level. Now, I ain't saying we the funniest people in the world or the most fun people in the world, but shit, I like us. I think we cool. You know what I mean? In the because, top 10. <laughs> at least. Yeah, top dead 10. or alive. Yeah. But the thing is, like like Tristan said, like not a lot of shit comes out, uh, you know, real close together. So you have to have some type of chemistry. You got to have some type of just some type of aura about your show because otherwise you're just going to be spouting facts. You're going to be like the teacher that reads out the book. You're like, dog, I got the book. I could just read the shit right. myself. Um, you know, but I, I think it's I think it's pretty easy, to be honest with you, and I'm happy that, that it's easy. It's one of the easier things that we have to do. Yeah, it's a win-win. I feel like I've met a lot of dope people from this. Mm-hmm. I get to talk about making beats, something I love. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. And this is my job, so it's like it's like a win-win. It's like I got a cool ass job. That's I was talking fact. and hanging around people. Yeah, that, that's okay. Yeah, damn. I didn't realize how uh, how easy I thought this was. This is this is awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, here's a cool question: Is tribalism in the producer community necessary? Um, I don't know if it's necessary, but I will say tribalism amongst human beings within itself is inevitable. When you have a certain amount of people and then a certain uh, theme that they're already bonding over, then there's certain sub themes and things in there that other people are going to bond over. You're going to have uh, some type of tribalism. I think tribalism is good. If if for nothing else, you could be going through things and not uh, not know what's going on. And if you have a tri- a quote unquote tribe on that subject, you'll no doubt come across people that have you know, been down the path that you're going. I think tribalism in the producer community, uh, it's real good. As long as you stay open-minded about it and don't be like the, the either or people, I think you're cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Beats Music says, does anyone else having issues with DistroKid's song not being added to IG or other platforms as well? Also not getting lyrics added, um, even though they've been accepted or approved. Hmm. Hey, if, you, if you've if you been going through that, hit up Beats Music. You know what I mean? Yeah. I you I I need to start using DistroKid. I'm a TuneCore guy because my homegirl runs TuneCore Atlanta, so I just automatically always went there. But I do like how DistroKid is set up. You know what I mean? But I probably need to start releasing more stuff too. Well, that's that's really a good question because somebody actually asked, "How do you get fans?" Okay, they must be from a different country. I'm I'm gonna try to try to word this uh the right way it says best ways to get fans into for distro kid so i guess the best way to get fans into your distro kid i'm mm-hmm. not sure um well i mean to me distro kid is like a hub you know what i mean it's like it's just a uh, somewhere to get people to other places but if you're trying to get your streaming numbers up i mean for me what i've seen this work lately is uh it's this kid named DDG, right? DDG, if you're not like into the YouTube world, like he was like a vlogger, prank guy, like he did those kind of, but now he's a rapper, dog. And he's like popping, dog. And I think what it is because 
people have grown up watching him and they got to know him. So when he started doing music and it was good, it's kind of like everybody like rock with it. It's like, oh, this is great. You know what I mean? So I would just start doing stuff where people can kind of get to know you. Just like how we do the podcast, people know us yep. from doing, you know, so when, whenever we drop content, people are attached to it because they've seen us go through all these issues, figure it out. They've seen what, you know, so it's, it's a different kind of atmosphere than when if you just running a cold ad to somebody be like listen to my song that right, attachment right, right. isn't gonna be there yeah you raise a good point um you, you re- not only do people get a chance to know you but if you're really an authority on something or like mm-hmm. you know your shit you know what you're talking about that gives people a chance to see that or if you're you know you might be funny or whatever mm-hmm. people are gonna rock with that but you do have to give a little bit of yourself look at how many people out there make beats and all you see is them making beats on the thing. Now, if your beats are, are cool and you make beats in a video, that's good. But it's a whole bunch of cool beat making videos out there. So unless right. your videos are over the top Scorsese style or your beats are just Tim, you know, for the nine nine and two thousands <laughs> and all that, then you're just gonna be another beat making video. But if you pepper in different types of content and a lot of that content, people get to see you. You get to state your opinion, how you feel about certain things. People get to see your style, even the accent, the way you talk. Now people are more invested in you. So now when they scroll and they see 20 cool beat making videos, but they see you, they're like, oh, no, nah, that's funny homie from Seattle that's right. always eating the Doritos or, you know, whatever. I think a lot of people, because it's the music industry, they think it's all music. But times are changing now. Like everything is on the internet. It's uh, mm-hmm. cameras. It's people talking to other people. It's so much interaction going on that you can't not give a little bit of your personal self and think that you're going to make it unless you just mm-hmm. you're super right. crazy with it. I, I'll even say, bro, Plies, Boosie, their mm. careers might be as good as when in their heyday <laughs> now because of social media. Yes. Plaz to me, Plaz had a, a big gap where it's like I felt like nobody was really paying attention to him. Social media drops, and he under smart dude, man. You know what I mean? And he he picked it up. He understand how to make content, and now he drops a song. People posting everywhere. It's going viral. Boosie, the goat of IG, bro. <laughs> bro, <laughs> like free Boosie all the time. Uh, this, the same thing, like. Because we're invested in Boosie and we think he's funny. When he drop a song, you be like, "All right, cool, I'm rocking with it." You know, yep. exactly. That's something I got to work on more as a content, bro. I, I I go back and forth. I just get so caught up in life. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> well, fortunately, we have this podcast yeah, at yeah. least for people to like see us in our natural element and talk about what we talk mm-hmm. about and answer these questions. But yeah, like Plus, he got it. Everybody loves Plus. I think half mm-hmm. the people now. Because I'm pretty sure Ply's uh, fan demographic has at least doubled oh, yeah. in the last couple of years. Half of those people probably don't even know him for music, don't even really care about the music. They're just into his IG. And then, they, you know, they get mm-hmm. wind of the music. And like you said, they, they'll just buy it. Just exactly. to show support because they like him so much. Mm-hmm. Man, it's... It, now think about it. Plaz just didn't have any of the IG shit going on. You didn't know anything about how he felt, how he sounded, how funny he was. And he just dropped a song out of nowhere. Boom! I'm not a racist. Here you go. You're right. You gonna be like what? But yo, it's, it's young Plaz. You gonna hit? You gonna yeah, hit the yeah. iTunes joint? You gonna buy it? Driving in the same car. It's your little old Plaz. It's your little old Plaz. I am OGS. What up, bro? What up, bro? Hey, shout out to the homie, man. Yes, sir. He did a fire, fire video for cassette drums, too. Listen, he always kill it, though. Oh, no yeah. matter what. I got I to gotta send you this. need to put him on the list to send him this pack. Oh, man. Go ahead. You know. Speaking of cassette drums, DJ912 says cassette drums, too. Bunch of fire emojis. And he also says loops crazy. Hey, my man. <laughs> 912. Appreciate, Appreciate you. you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, hold on. We had this question up here. We had a couple questions. Let's see. The first one, I think I put this up earlier. No. Okay, I see. I see with the Q and A. Okay. Yeah, look at it. Look. Look at it. Okay. I, okay. <laughs> Quality. Y'all suggest putting email in best. What best title when you send or just key in BPM? Wait, am I reading this wrong? No, he wrote it wrong. 
Okay. Hey, if you can, uh, rewrite that. I feel like you might be asking a good question. But I can't. I don't know, know if he's saying is it subject line or uh, as he just talking about like the name of the file. I don't know. know what I'm saying? saying if you could, and so we got another one. Hey, <laughs> if I send you a track, could you let me know your take on it? All right, Alex Music. What up? Alex Music is here with us um, a couple times. I'm not. I'm not gonna go in on Alex Music, man. I appreciate you sending that. However, um, Alex Music, be careful asking people that because essentially what you're doing is you're giving someone an assignment. You know what I'm saying? And it has nothing to do with your character or anything like that. But when you say, hey, listen to this music, number one, give me your take on it. That's number three. Number two in the middle is listen, analyze, assess, take notes, then go to number three. Now, that's a lot to ask somebody that you may think is busy. And now imagine certain people might get asked this 30, 40 times a day. And it's that type of thing. Like you gotta give people a little bit of a reason to check out your music. Like, okay, you're here on the show every now and again. So I might be like, eh, you know, I'm, sure. I, I might check it out, something like that. Cause it's, it's, it's something, it's something there. You're not just out of the blue. But I would avoid doing that because I don't think people look at it like that. But you are really giving somebody that you already deem is busy a homework assignment that they have to come back to you after they analyze, remembered your songs, remembered the arrangement problems, gave that back to you, and now you just leave. And that person spent X amount of time analyzing this for you for what? Right. Yeah. And it, bro, that's a, that's a lot of work. People don't think of it like, oh, you're just listening. But now imagine that all day. People just send you know. that all day. Hey, man, I just want to send you my new mixtape. Just tell me what you think of it. Or I would like to get your opinion on my music. That's a lot. Yeah, that's real. Yeah, especially, real hey, especially someone who charges for that. That is a lot. Yeah. No, that's big facts. Yeah. Okay, yeah. everybody's saying that they think he was talking about the title of the beat, right? So do you just put the title oh. of the beat or do you put the key and all that? Which is it okay, you answer, but it brings me to a question. Okay. Um, well, the answer is if you have that information, I like to put it in. Mm. I like to be as accommodating as possible. I like to make the session mm. easy. I like to build great rapport with the engineer. I can't tell you how many engineers mm. I've met. They're like, oh, you the one that sent the track. Yo, thank you for putting the key. Thank you sure. for putting the, you know, all that type of stuff. A little bit is very little time spent could go a, a long way to some people so yeah, that's I, right. I would put all of that if you got it yeah especially because you gotta think man to me and i know we, we might get some slack mixing key is trash i'll take i'll take the burden mixing no, key is trash bro. we're gonna take them bullets equally because it is trash <laughs> bro i trash hate trash. it bro like i seen uh shout out to cosign he had a, a joint he's like yo sometimes you got he said don't rely on that you gotta take out the piano and tap that boy until you know what i mean Mm-hmm. And uh, you know what I mean? So it's just like mixing key to me is trash. So to me, I would want to give people the best, like, all right, cool. I know this is an E flat minor. I'm gonna send this boy. Here's the BPM. You know what I mean? So you ain't got no questions. It's always drag. Here you go. Hey, and a lot of saving, grid. saving time. And in music, a lot of mm-hmm. times when you're saving time, you're saving money. Somebody money. That's facts. Yeah. And my question to you is. Do you name beats like random stuff or do you keep it really generic? Because I've had experiences where I would name a beat something and then the artist would make, make the song with that. Always. What I Like I, the beat is called Jumping Out of the Gym and then all of a sudden the hook is Jumping Out of the Gym. And I'd be like, I don't think I wanted that though, dog. I, I, wanna, <laughs> I want a, a hook, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if I want the Jumping Out of the Gym hook, you know what I mean? <laughs> Wait, because I saw your point, but then you raised another point because yeah, artists will always always do that but i do remember a point where i was like okay i gotta start naming my stuff differently because mm. people keep making songs about you know it's, it's about what the title is about and i'm like damn i gotta start naming stuff differently but i would always give consideration mm. to what i would name stuff but it would be it would be weird it would be intriguing but it would be something for me 
to like remember something or you know just something like that but yo i don't know i'm like dog you just made a chorus called a, a, a song called blue point fives <laughs> and you don't even know what that means mm-hmm. but you just made it because that's what the beat was named and you just didn't feel like thinking of a hook but um yeah i named my stuff uh i try to name it c- catchy interesting names that i wouldn't mind the song being about at this point now let me ask you do you put the date in your beats no nah. see I, I know people who put the date and i normally will right like i, I used to put but i don't put the, the year anymore because I have beats this from 2018 that could go now. And mm-hmm. I don't want somebody to see it and be like, oh, this is an old beat. I don't, you know what I'm saying? So I just put name, then I put like the month and then the day and that, and then the key and the BPM. That's, yeah, that's, I name my sounds like that. But yeah, beats, mm-hmm. you get name, key, BPM. Yeah. yeah. That's a good see, point though. I never thought about that. Yeah, because, bro, I, I had a whole, like, run where I was, like, I feel like I was in L.A. I was, like, turned up. I was, you know, having a good time. So all the names for my beats would be, like, hella lit. They sounded like songs. And every song right I was sending to, bro, I was, like, that would be the <laughs> name of the song. I was, like, bro, Diego was, like, bro, you got to stop naming them beats like that, dog. That's <laughs> you got to stop doing it. And I was, like, yeah, that's true. That's a fact, man. Yeah, you, you got you got to stop it. You got to stop it. That is the fun part, though. I, I do enjoy, like, at the end of the beat, you're, like, what am I going to name this? Dog, that shit is the most fun for me. Yeah. And well, we gotta do it with sounds. Mm-hmm. Not as fun when you name in two hundred of something oh, yeah, at a yeah. time, but just one, pretty fun. Oh, doing packs that stressed me out, dog. I just, you know what, you know my trick for naming sounds in a pack. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share this on there. I go to Genius.com and I look up like Migos, <laughs> and I just read through the lyrics and be like. A- AP, that's the name. <laughs> Chopper, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Mama, all right, cool. That's in there. Hey, man, listen. Yeah, I either name sounds, if I make them out of something, I'll name them after what I made them out of. Or, mm-hmm. like I said, turn on a movie, turn on TV, turn on something. And I'm like, what's that to say? Bottle cap? Bottle cap's in there. Right. Yeah. Yep, no, that's, that's real. Yeah, keep it. Keep it going. We we'll yep. see. Uh, Ponzu says, "Shout out to Ponzu." He says, "I always put the BPM and key in the track. It just makes sense. The mm-hmm. artist could pull your track and love it, and the engineer may not know uh, what he's doing and be able to figure out the key or the BPM, and the artist will just say next, bro. I've seen it happen so many times. See, yo, listen, you got to think about the young realistics of the world. Make their job easier, mm-hmm. because as engineers, and listen, face this show is we're engineer advocates on this show." That's making it easier for somebody's engineer. And if you think about it, that engineer is always making it easier for you as a producer. So the least you could do, cut them a little slack, get that man the key and the BPM. That's facts. Yeah, because he's about to take your beat and make it way better than you thought it was going to be. Big facts. Yeah. Fiction, what up, Shawty? Hey. (laughs) What up, what up? Uh, let's see. So we got a question. So how should I get started trying to come up with my own branding LLC? If you go to soundoracle.net, click on tutorials and blogs. I think it's only two or three blogs back. Um, we did shout out to Maya. Maya wrote an awesome blog, hey. how to start an LLC in seven easy steps. I believe a lot of your questions will be answered right there. And as far as branding, like colors and stuff just look at look at stuff you like there go on is. like a pinterest or dribble you know what i mean look at different logos make a little vision board you know what i mean Shapow. Yeah. um yeah. dj 912 says I, I feel like both of us are good at, we could definitely answer this okay oracle you're going through this right now what makes a good course around music production i dislocated my shoulder and i got time and i get a <laughs> bunch of requ- uh, requests to uh to teach um first of, well first of all i hope your shoulder gets better my, my dog definitely man hey get that rope that rotator cuff back in you know back in action man get well soon to me the thing that makes a great course is the same thing that makes a great product and it is solving a problem mm-hmm. so the people that make the best courses to me really have their finger on the pulse of what their community needs and what the struggles are now every now and again you'll see uh, me send out, you know, put something in my stories or send out an email, you know, what are you struggling with right now? Something. 
uh, to that effect. I know Trizza does the same thing. And, you know, we want to check on you, but really it's just making sure that we can serve you as best we can. And we really need to know what people have problems with. And we base our courses off of things like that. So the best courses are derived from solving the biggest problems of your community. And like, I say I learned this from ads, but even with beats, the ones that you think people are going to like isn't the stuff that they're going to like. And the same things with mm-hmm. courses, like you need that feedback because you're going to be like, oh, I, t- I explain everything. And then it's going to be like 10 questions about 50 other things where it's like, you know what I mean? You'd be like, bro, I didn't even think that that should be in there. So that feedback to me is like crucial. That's to me the biggest part of making a a good course. Facts. And get on um, get on Instagram or get on social media and see what producers are talking about. You know, even memes. Memes are indicators of great problems in the producer community. (laughs) That's facts. Memes are mainly about producer problems. That's facts. Great, great place to get info. You know, I mean, it's funny, but it's it's research. It's research. Um, Ponzu says, Chico, buy Scalar 2, put it on your MIDI track and let them listen to your chords and uh, tell you to keep you on short. I have Scalar 1. Should I go ahead and buy 2? I like 2. I didn't have 1, though, but I do like 2. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and buy it. Yeah, I I went and bought a bunch of plugins last week, so I, I need to. Yeah. Duh, I've been buying Max for Live plugins like crazy again. I have an addiction. I don't buy a lot of things. I might have dumbed out with that shoe thing two weeks ago. Oh, yeah, you went ham. But outside of that, I don't really like have a buying addiction mm-hmm. to anything. But, bruh, Max for Live plugins, every now and again, I hit a little, man, Isotonic getting all my money. Oh, bro, I, I went ham on two weeks A week ago, bro, I went and spent, I spent, I spent a, I spent a grip. I spent a little <laughs> little ticket, you know what I mean? Hey man, look, you gotta do it, bro. Hold on. I wanna I wanna tell people about this uh about this this Max for Live plugin I got real quick, but I think I just heard my bartender. Hold on one second. All right, cool. I'll, I'll keep people busy. Let's see, uh Trust the Meme God. Man, I've been slacking on my memes. Oh, right, I've been slacking right. on the social yeah, media. Right. That is my goal for this next now that this kid is out, I'm gonna get back on the social media and the memes. I've been slacking. I'm gonna make some memes. That's my, on my on my agenda. I got bro. I got one for Halloween, dog. It's I feel like it's funny. I've been saving this meme for months, dog. That's how I know it's funny, because uh, my daughter watches this cartoon and it's got like a Halloween song and she loves it. So she's been watching this all year and it's a part where I I saw it and I said, like, oh, that's a meme, dog. So I've been saving this clip, dog, <laughs> for Halloween <laughs> for like three months. Hey, well, go ahead and post it and let that joint go ham and then so I can post it two days later. Hey, hey, that's how we do it, Shotty. <laughs> you already know. By the way, should I be nervous when I get a drink? So you see how big this cup is, but the drink is only right this much. And it's very dark. Oh, yeah. Nervous isn't the word. You know, excited. Yeah. hmm Oh, damn. <laughs> that's pretty good <clears throat> I, I want another one but I would have to run all the way upstairs and, and do all that and it's just <sighs> okay yes, I'm on the way I'm good so we, we can get into these questions but that drink reminds me of uh, something I want to talk about but it's, it's, it's not that important I want to make sure we get through some uh, through all of our important stuff uh, Ponzu first. says, I thought Oracle was going to look at his watch and control Ableton through his Max for Live device. Oh, so you don't <laughs> think I can? Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> he bought a Ben 10, y'all. <clears throat> Is that Ben 10? Hey, you oh, know what? Mom. But now, all right, I got to get all this stuff over because once, we, once we're off November, December, that's the type of stuff I like to do. Like, oh, yeah. I could probably control this through my watch. I can, you probably, I'm pretty it, sure I could do that. Anybody could do it, I believe. I could. All right. Um, oh, this Max for Live uh, plugin real quick. I've been looking for something like this forever. I thought I was going to have to try to make it myself or pay somebody to make it or something like that. It's called Note Displacer. And mm-hmm. even though I'm using it in as part of a system, a big system that I have going on, what it does is it changes the voicing of chords. So if you play a chord based off certain parameters that you set, it might play one of the notes, an octave higher or octave lower or how many notes higher, how many notes lower. Mm. Um, You can set up like kind of like zones a little bit 
the zoning uh, isn't that great, but it, yeah, it's, so like, so let's say notes from C negative two to C to, to B two can be pitched up only because they're low. Notes from mm. C three to B four can be pitched up or down. Anything B four or higher can only be pitched down. Like you can set it up like that. Nah, that's why, dog. It is kind of a game changer for the voicing. But I don't like the zoning that much. And because of the system I built is another Maxwell plugin, uh, Maxwell Live plugin that I use with it called MF Range. It's part of the uh, MIDI filter 10 from Isoton Isotonic. And basically what it does is um, it just zones your, your MIDI, like only notes such and such and such and such can pass through here. Only notes such and such, such and such can pass through here. Those two things together, Game changer, bro. So if you're in the A1 and you're in the Max for Live, look up Note Displacer and um, get the uh, MIDI Filter 10 pack. It got the MF range in it, but it has a whole uh, nine other dope uh, MIDI plugins too. The whole time I kept wanting to say Zone 4 and then <laughs> MF range. If, I just feel like on the box, they should have MF Doom. MF Doom. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Santa Rocco got that automatic drink system. I need one, bro. Listen, have you seen the Keurig joint? This is alcohol, yes. I haven't yeah. wanted something so dumb in my life so bad. There was something prior to that called the six shooter. My god brother used to have one, it's called the six shooter. You got six different alcohol joints, and that joint would just spin around. And I need it, bro. I low key want one, dog. I ain't even gonna front, dog. Hey, man, it, that, that's it's pretty cool. By the way, Bobby Brown was telling y'all you need a bartender on it. Not just a tenderoni, a bartenderoni. <laughs> That's it's a little lost in translation, but poet says little young DC on SoundCloud. So everybody, we're gonna get off the live chat. We're gonna open up a completely different app. Well, we're gonna guys, remember been, what his name is. Been great. And we're gonna type it in to go listen, bro. Don't do that. That's so mm -hmm. it's not a good look. My Once my again, D passive aggressive. That okay. Listen, when people do shit like that. That is the difference between if you walk up to somebody and they hand them a business card and tell them what your business is about versus running up to them, throwing your business card at them and running away. <laughs> That's what you did. You, you ran up to us, you threw up your business card in our face, Literally. and you just ran away. And then dipped out. <laughs> read the room, dog. Yeah. And so now that leaves everybody looking at each other like, yo, who the hell was that? Was that your man? No, I don't know. All right, we're going to keep it moving. You got to watch the strategies. You got to watch the techniques. Otherwise, it's not just... I'll try it and it might work. It might not work. It's you look crazy as hell. So when people yeah. see you again, they're like, oh, you the motherfucker that threw the flyer in my face and ran away. No, I'm cool. Watch it. Watch how you carry yourself. That's your reputation. Exactly. Fiction got a good uh, question. She says, you should ask everyone how many different creative hats they think they wear slash wore when starting off in music. And then you guys should tell that too. Nice. Okay. So for those who didn't hear that, because that's a really good question, and I'd like everybody here to answer in the chat, how many creative hats do you wear or think you wore when starting out? Just just a uh, just a number, if you can. I'm I'm curious. <laughs> I'm curious, and I'm I'm. Let's see. I'm over here thinking. I feel like my jersey about to be ugly, dog. Dog. I feel like we're both gonna total and tally up everything that we think. And then we're both going to be like really just missing the ball. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's see. Oh, I see five. Now I'm curious. Y'all saying four or five. I want to know what they are. Now the number just <laughs> okay. ain't doing it for me. I need to know. <laughs> I need to know. When 19. I had on 19 hats. Yeah. That's, I, I feel like my dream is about to be ugly. I don't even know if I want to. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to do it for myself because I feel like I would be like, man. I just tried. Stop doing this. Got to like six or seven. Like, nah, this is this is not gonna be a fun exercise. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Hey, go ahead. Go ahead and list them, man. Might yeah, as well go let's, ahead. Let's let's list them. Yeah. <laughs> Fictionalize says list them out loud. I will count for you. Who? You wanna go first, Oracle? Or should mm. I go first? I ain't gonna lie. Community trying to do like a combined joint and just start yeah. throwing them out because I feel like we had some of the same hats and one of us is we're gonna miss some, but we both do the same thing. So let's go. Let's go one for one. 
Um, sound designer, obviously. Yeah. Uh, producer, obviously. <laughs> Graphic designer. <laughs> Web developer. <laughs> It's about to get ugly. Uh, S SEO and copy writing. <laughs> Facebook advertising. Ooh, social media manager. Damn, Fisher said DJ. Damn, <laughs> D uh, DJ. Boom. <laughs> I didn't even think about that one. Engineer. That wasn't oh, always a realistic. Project manager. Ooh, that's the that's the worst one. <laughs> HR, bro. HR, you gotta do. You gotta deal with it, with employees and contractors. You got to accounting. <laughs> oh my god! How could I forget accounting? See, that's why we had to go one and one. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right. I feel like I'm not out, but I'm trying to think of something significant. Yeah, I feel like it's something else in there. But well, shit, how many we, had, we got right there? That was ten right there. Dog. Yeah, and it's, it's more. I think those might be the uh, 10 most important, though. Yeah, yeah. Especially that project manager. That's the... Bro. Oh, yeah. video. I didn't even think about editing video and stuff. Oh, oh, God. Why you think I don't do beat making videos anymore? Bro, that is the... I want to do content so bad, but I don't want to edit. And as soon as I can figure that part, part of my life out, I would be so much happier. Hey, hey, man. Hey, by the way, that reminds me. Shout out to the good folks that edit this show. Oh, shout out to you. Beast Music. Shout out to shout out. Uh, shout out. Realistic. Shout out to Jen. Shout out to everybody. Because this is the one thing that we can do that actually gets edited and sent out properly on a consistent basis. That's facts. Yeah. Uh, Sound Oracle need to add Arthur and write that book. Hey. <sighs> I do. You know what? I need to um I need to really find out how a book is written and just go oh. ahead and do it. You know I can help. You know I I I just wrote a book but it's not about anything. It's about the other business that I'm in mm -hmm. and I I basically helped uh write the book and you know put sections oh, yeah. in there. Oh, so for I, sure. I I can, I, can, I can help you through that. It's not as hard as you think it is actually. It's not bad actually. I think once I once I know the system, it, it, it's, yeah. it's pretty easy. But when yeah. you see the system, you're like, "Oh, this I could. This not bad." Okay, definitely. Uh, I, I think I want to write a book. I'm yeah. telling you what, if I if I write this book and y'all don't buy it, man, that's what I'm saying. Man, we drop the drop the book. I need them Amazon joints to, you know what <laughs> I mean? Facts. Uh, let's see, Oracle invented Siri or something. <laughs> no, or Alexa. No, Alexa, stop. Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, good God. <laughs> anyway. Well, we'll see. When you're sending beats to ARs, how many should be sent? Um, I think we agreed on the show last time, no more than 10. Yeah. Yeah. Keep, oh. keep it to the point. Yeah. Somebody said marketing slash secretary, for sure. Yeah. For Always sure. good. Yeah, for sure. That's a lot of hats, man. That's that's, yeah. that's a lot of hats, fedoras, sombreros, all that shit. Scully's <laughs> Scully's wearing them, wearing them all, man. Ti beanies, the little the one that sits right here. Facts, you know I mean? yarmulkes, visors, do rags, <laughs> all that. Yes, <laughs> yes, all of that, bro. All oh, of that. The, the bow wow do rag. Okay, everything but that hat. I don't think I've. Ever you know, the right, this has nothing to do with production. Super random tangent, but you know, I. I, I Underneath the hat, I have uh, dreadlocks now. You know what I mean? Oh, and, uh, shit. Yeah, so, but I haven't got my hair retwisted, so my dress a little wild. Thus the hat. But um, I hit my brother. It's like, yo, this is a random question. What's the best do-rag to get? And he's like, yo, dog, it's going to sound crazy. But that Bow Wow went, it, it hit. Yo, and, uh, I, can I, picture, purpose I can picture him saying that to me. <laughs> and the crazy thing is, I was in the store, and I saw the Bow Wow one, and I was like, I'm not buying this one. <laughs> Come on, dog. I'm not you, doing this. Dog, you ain't gonna get that puppy love XL. <laughs> <laughs> you tripping. So you tripping. Oh man. So just, um you got a home shake. <laughs> you know what I mean? Every time you do that, Jay, man. <laughs> I ain't never had a do rag I had to step into and pull it over my head. That's crazy. Uh like a do rag booth. Um fiction law said uh Trinity. Yes, I did. You're right. I did code uh something called Trinity. You are absolutely correct. Yeah, pull it back out the tuck, man. 
Oh my god, yo, I am crying off the bow wow joint. Somebody said Grand Ass style do rag. Quintino, yeah, right, man. he's probably the do rag king, bro. Damn. But just be man, just be man seems like he would have a oh. a collection of do rags. Yeah, when he tells you something's the best, he's he's tried them all. He's like a do rag cologne connoisseur. Yes, like he he will tell you the best. Like, oh, this is made from Egyptian cotton, five thousand thread counts, bro. That's, yeah, that's your it. brother, and I know that. Yeah, that's facts. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. On Quantas Podcast, do you or Realistic use Devil Technologies detached software slash screen interface? If so, it seems like nobody's talking about it. If Realistic ever uses it, would you ever do tutorials? First of all, my brother, we don't do the Devil Technologies. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> we, we're not into those pagan rituals. <laughs> No, what the I, man I, wants you to think. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. I will ask, you know, Young Realistic, if you're in here, you can answer for yourself. Me, For me, that's a no, but I'm going to check it out. Um, speaking of, of new and intriguing technologies, have you seen this controller called the MP controller? I think mm-hmm. I'm saying that right. MP MIDI? Let me, let me look. I wrote it down. I wrote down a name. Uh, uh, yeah. So what the MP uh, MIDI controller is... It's a controller that allows you to control your VSTs like hardware. So Mm. basically it's an interface that um, it shows you like one VST at a time. The way they got laid out, it's like it's a it's a 21 and a half inch screen surrounded by 32 knobs. And every parameter for that particular VST is assigned to one of those knobs. And it's basically just like a big ass like table that whatever VST you're on, it becomes that VST and then you could adjust it and tweak it. I saw something like this uh, early Mm. to mid 2000s. It was called like Receptor or something like that. This is way, way back. It was like an orange box that you could like load VSTs up in. So this seems to be like the next generation of that. Uh, It's cool, you know, just touch screen. It's like a big surface type joint. It It looks cool how necessary it is. I'm not really sure. I think it's like 650 bucks uh, with $60 in shipping, something like that. Oh, hell no. <laughs> no. <Now, laughs> yeah. Like if I could just use it as a t- uh, 20, 21 and a half inch monitor when I'm not using it for VSTs and it might add a little bit more value to it. But at the same time, I don't know how eager I am to have a monitor with 32 knobs surrounding it. Yeah. I don't- I mean, if you into it, looked cool as hell because it gave every VST like a dope background. Like the UI of every VST looked really dope. Mm. But that's it. It's it's unnecessary. But I thought it was a cool ass controller. So if you if you're into crazy shit like that, check it out. It's called the MP controller, and it just went on sale for pre order today or yesterday. It seems like a thing um, that Oracle would have in the, in the studio somewhere. It does, and use it for like a week. Never use it again. Then the next year I find it and use it every day that year and then lose it again. Oracle's weakness for equipment is like equipment it controls something else. If it controls something else, oh, Oracle's like, oh, don't what? mind if I do. What? <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm very off the backboard, over the rim, out the trash can, into the net type. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, young Hive Mind, the producer, says, uh, sorry I'm late. Hope you good. Sound Oracle and Trizza, Ultimate Kid is next. Hey, appreciate it, my dog. Come on, man. Shout out, man. Shout out to young uh, how am I? Hold on. I'm about to screenshot. Pray for me. You got it. You got it. You got All right, it. I got it. No yes. way. There you go, bro. Yeah! <laughs> you know what? And on that note. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm not going to lie, man. I think we are through. Oh, shit. Hold on. Wait. We got, we got more questions. Okay. What we got? Let's see here. Bam. What should I do in order to protect the audio from being ripped off when sending a demo to artists? I swear people ask the question after we just um, answer it. Pray. Listen, yeah, I, <laughs> honestly, when it comes to this question, I got a zero for you. Just oh, yeah. have confidence. I mean, it might happen, it might not, but don't let this paralyze you to the point where you just don't send anything to anybody. Mm, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. We we have two more questions, believe it or not. Chambers LaFlair, man. Shout out to my There ex. he is. Come on, man. Shout out to Chambers. Big tings coming from this young man, dog. Trust me. 
Yes, indeed. Like, I'm proud of my homie, dog. He going to yeah. be all right. I've been calling it. If y'all if y'all go back to the record, I've been saying he going to be all right. Trust that me. is a fact. That is that is a fact. Trust me. Watch, watch the tings. The tings? The, the tings. tings. It's not even right. the things. It's the tings. The tings. All right. I think that's all the questions. So I had some some bullshit to put people up on. Um, you know, just like regular shit, because I, I have no more real topics. Did you have any real any more real topics, sir? No, I did. Hold on. Uh, Twitch announces partnership for digital music festivals. Are, are you guys excited about digital music festivals on Twitch? Nope. Yeah, that seems it seems weird. I feel like that's one of the things. It's not it's not gonna really hit like that. Nah. Part of the mm-hmm. lore is getting like some drinks and being slightly annoyed by the people who are too turned up and you know what I mean? And it's like, all right, I'm gonna jump up and down over here and you know, you can't get that that full effect in like, you know, on nah. Twitch. But n- no pickpockets and you don't have to wear real shoes, no mud. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, none that of that. Is, that's also true. None of that. Um, okay. So let's see, on to my BS topics before we get out of here. By the way, I'm drinking um, a bourbon drink. I don't know what this is, but I've been drinking bourbon today because I watched um, a documentary on Hulu yesterday called Neat. It is the story of bourbon. So it got me on this bourbon kick. It is really, well, it's really neat, but it's really interesting. It's, It's a really good watch. So you know, even if you're not into drinking, it's man, the science is it's just really dope watching these. You, you Manhattan, old fashioned, what are we talking? Dog, I don't know what this is. It tastes like if I had to guess bourbon, orange, curacao, lime, basil. Mm-hmm. I think it's uh, old fashioned. Is that is the, does that count? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll be getting confused. Yeah. Real quick, did you know that to taste like what's in bourbon, the more water you add to it, it you taste different things depending on the oh, amount yeah, of water yeah. you add to it. And that yeah. you should add water to bourbon. If you drink it, like you don't oh, really yeah, yeah. drink it straight, you should put um, at least a couple ice cubes or a flick of water, however much water you want. Mm-hmm. And that releases different uh, flavors in the bourbon. That's how the OG, OG give me give you the bourbon with the water in it. I was like, what is this? Now that's how I drink it. Yep. Yeah, that old fashioned. That's like my go-to. Yep. Y'all, y'all put the water in it, bro. Yes, bro, indeed. Have you heard the 21 Savage album? No, but I keep hearing it's like the best shit to ever come out. And Morgan Freeman uh, narrated bro, the joint. I ain't gonna hold you, dog. I wanted, to, I wanted to fight somebody after I heard that joint, dog. I was ready to I keep Bruh. hearing it's the best shit ever. <laughs> Bro, that album was good, dog. I ain't even going for it, dog. <laughs> and it's great because the production is great. Right. Metro Snap, you know what I mean? Dog, Always. honorable C-note, dog. Again, doesn't get enough credit, dog. That Never. man is a <laughs> monster, dog. Them C- when C-note makes his drums and stuff is crazy, but C-note, when he make them damn samples, bro, mm-hmm. bro, he got one on there that's so cold, dog. And, uh, and I like how 21 talks about, he talks about the whole UK stuff. Like he, bro, the video is like him and standing in front of like the little, I don't know if you're from the UK, please. I'm going to mess it up. But the guards with the little muskets and the 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 British guys. The, Scotland, uh, I'm about to say Scotland Yard. Not Scotland Yard, but uh, damn, I fucked it up too. Go ahead. On that on that kind of vibe. But he's standing in front Buckingham of Buckingham Palace. Yeah, them 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 folks, you know what I mean? So he's like standing in front of them. He's like, you keep playing about that UK stuff, like like they won't shoot. <laughs> I was like, yo, <laughs> this is cold. I love hey, this. Yeah, I keep so, hearing this though. I'm gonna have to do that uh this weekend. I'm gonna check that joint out. Yeah, it was it was a good album. As far as trap and like newer stuff, to me, one of the the better put together out. And then Morgan Freeman, dog. You yes. know what kind of flex that is? You got Morgan Freeman on your album narrating. I'm not gonna lie. I realized I was at a different point in my life where that was the seller for me. <laughs> I kept hearing the album was dope. I'm like, I will get around to it. I read yesterday that Morgan Freeman narrated some shit on there. I was like, damn, is that my line? Is that what gets me to go, Morgan Freeman? Man, I'm washed, but I'm still gonna check it out. I want. I want to do an album, and I just get Lil John and Walker Flocka to ad lib the whole thing. <sighs> yes, sir. Come on, man. That'd be dope. That'd be dope. It's the oh, whole album. <laughs> wait, wait. 
Oh, oh, that's how you know I'm on some bullshit. This ain't even a real, real topic. Madonna refused to collaborate with uh, David. Uh, how you say? Guetta, Getta. Getta? David Guetta because he was a Scorpio. That's weird. That seemed like that seemed like something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And now that I've read that on this paper, I'm like, yeah, I don't have anything else. Oh, The Boys season finale. I don't know anybody out there who watches The Boys. Mm. The season finale came out at midnight last night. Um, pretty fucking dope. I'm going to start watching it. Uh, eventually, I'm going to get through P-Valley, and then that's the next on my list. I'm on episode three, so I'm, I'm, I'm making progress. I'm Yeah, do them in that order, because <laughs> The Boys is two seasons. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, cool. yeah. They just concluded uh, season two. Also, for, for anybody else that's out there on the Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, all that shit, uh, Utopia, pretty dope. It's not for everybody. It's about uh, viruses and stuff uh, and comic books. It's really dope, though. Oh, and uh, I know we on random mode. We got to talk about the Lakers. About to get that LeBron. About to get that number four. I'm sorry, I just had to throw that in there. Hey, y'all man. know I'm. Y'all Laker see, fans on unites. Twitter. I only get on Twitter now for like uh, award shows and then basketball games. That's the only time I uh, ever tweet. <laughs> As a fact, Laker fans, go ahead and spam your hearts right now. I know y'all spam in them here. Hot. Spam them hearts. Y'all in here, hold on. We got one more question. Uh, it's a cassette drum kick. Good for lo fi beats. Of course, it is. Indeed. Definitely. You get all that, all that hiss and that instability, the dropouts from the, the tape dog. I just finished winding up a tape uh, before this show, believe it or not. But yeah, it's, it's good for lo fi. It's good for, for all that. Check it out. If you got any more questions, just uh, DM me. Yep. Big facts. All right, I gotta get man. a new camera, man. I'm about to order it. I keep getting on witness protection mode, dog. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Yeah, we got the same joint. It gotta be a setting or something. And you know, they taxing for uh web cameras since everybody's home. They That's taxing. trash. That's yeah. trash. I mean, if, if I sold web cameras, I I'd be like great, great strategy, but to some consumer, that's that's trash. Oh, Oracle. I, I think I I'm breaking down, dog. I think I'm about to make the, the move. Sounds like a good move. What? PC. Say PC. Say I'm, PC. I'm, I'm a cop of PC, dog. I'm cop. Oh, hold on, hold on. I got to. I got to unplug man. this. <laughs> I think I'm gonna cop a PC, man, because I want to stream and do all this stuff. And my Mac, it works. It works cool, but I know to do what I want to do. It ain't. It ain't it quite it. You know what I mean? So I and then I like keeping the idea, of keeping them separate, keep my MacBook for all that stuff, and then have a dedicated streaming gaming PC. So, yeah. you know. Hey, man, ain't nothing wrong with that. Hold on. I think I see some shade in here. I think it's turned into the shade room. Try a blue screen instead of a green screen. Oh, I, I thought this was a PC uh, thing. Nope. This is somebody helping somebody out. Sorry. No. Yeah. Hey, 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 this thing stuck to the wall. I don't feel like taking this right now. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> wait, uh, wait, hold on. Because I saw something dope in here. The ultimate kit was a great deal. 40% off. Three kits for fifty-seven bucks. Hey, Lots hey, of melodies. Hey. Come on, man. Hey, he got that. He took advantage of the special deal. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, yeah, hey, hey, man. Shout out to Hive Mind, bro. Facts. Shout out to shout out to the homie. So listen, that reminds me, I got shit to get to now that he mentioned that. So <laughs> I'm done. I'm 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 finished. Unless you got anything, brother. Hey, go get Ultimate Three. Brand new sample pack just dropped today, full of crazy melodies, crazy drums made by Grammy Award winning producer Diego Av. And if you order first 50, get a bonus MIDI pack that comes with it. Ooh. And you get a, uh, if you put a video up on IG, use the hashtag, all the rules and stuff is on the page, but you get a chance to collab with Diego Av, again, Grammy Award winning producer, and you can win a keyboard. So, you know, put all that together. I feel like that's a great deal. Great value for that pack. Definitely. You know? I think it's amazing. And once you cop that, you can head over to soundoracle.net and cop cassette drums too. As mentioned, uh, it's one hundred and seven over 170 handcrafted drums made with real cassettes, not cassette plugins, the real deal. And it also comes with three bonus kits. One is 50 top 40 MIDI chord progressions. Another one is... 200 drum midi patterns mm -hmm. and the third one is cassette percussion loops also percussion loops ran through real tape not plugins check it out soundoracle.net yes sir and i guess it's been another I episode 
AirPods <laughs> just went out. Oh shit. Well, Tris's AirPods is going out. Everything is uh, looking crazy right now. So I guess that's been another episode of Unquantized Podcast. If we did not get to your question this week, feel free to come back next week and and we'll answer your question there. All right, y'all. Hey, have a great weekend. Got any questions about the show, anything like that? Hit me 